In the last video, we learned about uh, these two functions called uh, all and any, and uh, that was, uh, you know, return true if uh, if uh, everything matches, and then uh, this here is if uh, you know one item matches, then uh, then you get true. And uh, then you might be wondering, well, what about if I uh, actually want the item? Like, let's say you uh, you have a you know a vec of uh, some numbers here, and you would like to you know, know if there's a 20 in there and also get it or see where it is. And that's what these uh, these next two methods are about. And they are called, <clears throat> let's see, one is called find and the other is called position, position, like that. So find is basically, and these, these uh, return an option. Um, this one returns an option and this one returns an option. And inside find, is uh, if you get some, then you get the item, uh, the first item that matches. And if you um, in position, if you get some, then you get the uh, the position of the item. So this is basically, I will try to get it for you. <clears throat> and position means uh, I will try to find it for you and tell you where it is. So that is the difference between the two. And uh, as always, I have a small example to show you how it works and they're the same as the others you uh you know you have an iterator going and then you have a closure and uh you know you use these uh these methods so let's imagine we have a vec i don't feel like typing all this so i'm going to paste it in there we are so it's got all the numbers from uh you know going up by 10 all from 10 to 100 and then we are going to see if we can find uh, find some numbers, so let's uh, so we're going to print line, and first we will you know there's the result there that we're going to print, and it's called numvec, and then we are going to iterate over it as always, and then we're going to use find, and inside there of course we are using iter which uh, gives a reference, so we uh, you know add this to match the type, and let's call it uh, let's call it number. We could call it anything we want. And we would like to say, okay, give me, uh, find me something that uh, <clears throat> that can be divided by three. So we uh, take the number for modulo three equals zero. That's what I meant to do. There we go. Number modulo three equals zero. So please give me that. And then, uh, you know, it'll be a sum or a none. And if it's, uh, if it's a sum, then it'll be inside there. And then the next one, we are going to uh, do something different. We'll say you know, number uh, times two equals uh, 30. So try to find that. And then uh, after that comes, uh, we're going to use uh, position. So you can see it's, a, um, it's exactly the same, except uh, we are going to change find to position and find to position. And uh, you can see I just copied and pasted it in. So these are, you know, use them in exactly the same way. They both return uh, an option. And um, let's see, we should probably take that out and not confuse the compiler. And there you go, you can see. So you get uh, options, like we said. And, uh, you know, this one, it, uh, you know, it finds the first one, uh, which is here, 30, and then it stops. So it's, uh, it's the same as any, so it'll go, you know, until it finds something. And so, you know, you could uh, think about using this uh, rev to uh, reverse the iterator if you think you have a long iterator and maybe, uh, maybe your item that you want to find is towards the end. And then, um, you know, for the next one, uh, it found nothing, so that's fine, we get a none. And then uh, over here it says, uh, uh, I should change this. I was going to number times two equals 30. Let's try that again. So this last one will be, uh, comment that out. And this last one will be none. So, uh, you know, it looks for the position of something that multiplied by two equals 30. And, you know, it goes to the end of the iterator and there's nothing there. Whereas over here, uh, it's, it gives us a sum two, and the two is the position of the item, it's not the number. 
and if you look at the uh, at the methods themselves, one thing uh, one thing you have to uh, watch out for with uh, position is uh, this one here. <clears throat> so the method does no guarding against overflows. So if there are more than u size match non matching elements, it'll give the wrong re result or panic. So um, you know it. Um, you want to make sure that your uh, that your uh, vec is uh, you know not going to be more than the uh, the maximum size of u size or um, you know put some logic in there to uh, to maybe like panic if it's uh, if it's too much or uh, you know figure something out there and this also uh, brings me to the last thing I wanted to mention in this is uh, you know we haven't looked at this you know what is this uh, u size max and uh, you might um, you might remember that uh, you know consts in uh, in Rust they are written with uh, with these uh, capital letters and you know you don't have to you can say const uh, my const i32 equals 6 you know you can do that and it'll still work but uh, rust is going to say please you know please change it to uh, uppercase you should have written it as my const so uh, that's why whenever you see these capitals you uh, you're pretty sure that you have a const and uh, these um, if you go inside the uh, the standard library you can see for these primitive types you always have these uh, these max and mins and you can use that to see uh, you know how big can they get and how small can they get so they're really really simple you just uh, you just do that and then you go like uh, you wait max and you can do that for you know all of these uh, numeric types and there you go it'll tell you that it's uh, 255 so um, so this is uh, this is useful to make sure that uh, you know maybe you don't want to overflow or underflow and then you can say like uh, I don't if num is greater than uh, let's say you have like an i8 i8 max and then you don't have to write the exact number you don't have to remember you know it's because uh, if you have like let's say you have u64 max and uh, that's a huge number and you don't want to say if uh, if y is greater than this massive absolutely massive number and this doesn't mean anything to the uh, to the human reader either like what what's the point of that so then you write uh, u64 max and then it's a nice um it makes sense to the compiler and it also makes sense to the human reader as well